Hi everyone, my name is Lauren. I am on Team OEA and welcome to OEA The Basics Part 2, a recorded training where we are going to go over the basics of how to really start building events and experiences, um, moving around guests, sharing your screen, all of those things that are necessary to know um, when you are running an event on OEA. So first thing that I want to talk about is just some basic best practices, right? If you've been to an event in OEA or you visit us in our office, we may have told you some of these tips and tricks to help make sure that you and your guests have the best experience possible, right? So first of all, OEA is best on a desktop or a laptop computer. Um, our mobile support is not super strong right now. So if possible, make sure that you and your guests all have access to um, a computer. Um, Chrome is the fastest browser, right? You can use OEA just fine on Safari, on Firefox, on Edge. Um, you know, later versions of those browsers are okay and we've seen success with other browsers as well. But if you do have Chrome, we recommend that that is what you use. Additionally, make sure that no other video apps are, are using your camera. Um, so if you have something like a Zoom that may be also open on your browser, uh, OEA won't probably be able to take your camera when it's being used by another application. So make sure that you've closed out of that as well. Uh, and finally, we recommend using headphones um, for the best auditory experience, right? This is kind of true for any video platform, um, but just whenever everybody uses headphones, it sort of blocks out that white noise. Uh, maybe, you know, the, the whirring of your computer fan or you know, dogs barking in the background, sirens outside, you never know. Um, so if you use headphones, if everybody uses headphones, right, it's going to provide a better auditory experience for everyone. Um, so that's sort of our spiel on the best practices, right? Um, the first thing that you're going to want to think about when you start setting up an event uh, is the workspace settings, right? The same place that we started in the part one training. Um, so these are things that you're going to want to think about prior to bringing anyone into your space. Things like who has admin only or director only admin access um, to your space, right? So as a reminder, admin access is this whole back end, what you see right now, right? You have the um, ability to edit different things. Director only admins will see what you see whenever you toggle director mode, All right? So hitting that um, that little icon up here of a projector, making it turn red. This is what director mode only admins will see. Um, director mode access is going to be important in today's training because we are largely going to um, we're going to build a lot of buttons and we're going to show you how to practice using those buttons and how to use them on you know the day of your event or your experience. Um, and so, you know, as a reminder, director mode is going to be where you click those buttons, right? Because director mode is where you go to make those things happen. Whereas editor mode is where we're going to be to actually build them, right? So you'll notice if we're in editor mode, as we build these buttons, you can't click a button in editor mode and expect it to work. You'll have to be in director mode in order to use that. Um, so again, so all of this stuff, right? Um, in the workspace settings, what region it's in, what your vanity URL is. Um, super important, the navigation, right? We talked about that a lot in the part one training, what your navigation is set up to be. Do they see a room list? Do they see a map icon? Um, you know, what, what rooms do you have turned on and turned off in the navigation? Um, all of that stuff covered in the part one training and you'll, you just wanna make sure to think about that um, prior to opening up your event. The next thing I want to draw your attention to is the notes and controls section. So this is down here, right? Depending on how big your window is in OEA, this might look something more like this, right? And I, I, I do a lot of trainings where people are like, where are my notes and controls? Why are they so small? Um, if you hover over the notes and controls right here, you'll see a double sided arrow up here and you can actually just pull this up. Right, to actually make this notes and control section as big or as small as you'd like. Make sure that you've got plenty of room down there to fit whatever buttons or notes you have um, down there. So that's super important um, and we are going to talk about that um, and sort of use this section in today's training. The next thing I want to draw your attention to when it comes to um, executing events in OEA is the shouting feature. So in the top left corner of your screen, you'll see that there is a little megaphone icon, right? This is our shouting feature. And the way that this works is sort of like a um, sort of like a, a walkie talkie where you have to hold it down for the entire time that you want to use it. And then you release it whenever you no longer want to be seen and heard, right? So if you do this, right, if you hold down on this button, you'll see that you appear right on the top, on top of the screen in this little box. And what you can't see is that this box of me and the audio as well is also being piped into every single one of these rooms on the room list on the left-hand side. So why do you use this? 
namely to make announcements, right? So to welcome people to an event, to announce that the event is ending, um, and then especially whenever you are moving people. So today we're gonna learn about how to make breakout buttons, which move people around the space, right? Things like bring all here buttons, shuffle to breakout room buttons, um, enter here buttons, things like that, right? And so, um, you know, whenever you are in OEA and you're a user, um, it kind of is a little bit jarring to just be like pushed between spaces without given warning. Uh, you, you know, you don't want somebody to be mid conversation, mid activity, mid exploring in a space. And then all of a sudden they're just like abruptly pulled out of the room and into another place. Right. So what we do is we recommend using this shouting tool to give people a heads up. Right. Hey, um, you know, in about 30 seconds, we're going to bring you into the auditorium or in about 30 seconds, we're going to, um, you know, push you into your breakout rooms. So again, that's that shouting feature up here, this megaphone icon in the top left hand corner. So um, now we're going to get into um, we're going to get into buttons, right, and how to make different buttons. So there's two different buttons that we have in OEA. Okay, so we have our action buttons. That's that lightning bolt icon up here. Action buttons make things happen, right? They invoke actions. They can show and hide things. They can play a video, make a video go full screen, show an image. They can move things around the screen, uh, which we're gonna cover in the part three training, right? So action buttons pertain to elements um, in your space, right? The second button is a breakout button. That's this like shuffle icon right here. Okay, breakout buttons move people. Um, this is what we're going to use for our bring all here buttons, our enter here buttons, our shuffle buttons, all of that stuff. So when you're looking to move people from uh, room to room within your OEA workspace, you're going to be talking about a breakout button. A couple of notes on breakout buttons before we begin. In OEA, we have a feature that's called pinning. Okay, so pinning someone to a space means tying them to that room and they will then be exempt from all other buttons. There is no breakout button you can build that will bring someone to a room or that will move someone who is currently pinned to that room. Only people who have admin access or director mode only access have the ability to pin. So let's talk about pinning. So we're going to look at the left hand side here and you'll see, you know, everybody who's in the space is going to appear here with their face bubble. And at the top left corner of my little icon right here, you'll see a push pin. And if I click it, it's gonna turn red. That means that I am currently pinned to this room. Okay, so even if somebody in you know, the presentation room hit a breakout button to send people to the three breakout rooms that we have in this space right now for this training, so the lodge and the beach resort in Greece, I would not move. I would not be included in that because I'm pinned. An important thing to note here is that users, regular users, right, without special access, general people who are just in your space, they cannot pin or unpin themselves. They can't pin or unpin anyone. So it is important that if you are going to be pinning people that you give them a heads up because if they try to move, right, so I'm pinned to this room. If I try to move to the presentation room, I'm going to get this error message. You are currently pinned to the scene, unpin yourself to move, right? So. It, if I know that I'm pinned, right, that makes sense to me. I'm probably not going to try to move. But if you pin somebody without telling them and they get that error message, they may be confused as to why other people can move throughout the space, but they can't. Um, and so as we start building our breakout buttons, you're going to notice that in the breakout builder, um, in the configuration, um, it will make a note that, you know, whenever you are moving all users, it's not all users, it's all users except those who are pinned, right? So just something to think about. Um, we typically use pinning for... Um, you know, if, if certain presenters need to stay in certain rooms for the whole time, or maybe you or maybe an OEA staff member is sitting in like an event support room or a tech lounge for the duration of the event, right? And we don't want to be getting shuffled around with all of the attendees of the event into these rooms, right? So we would then pin ourselves to that room and make sure that, that we don't move um, and then just unpin ourselves accordingly. So that is pinning. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead and make our first breakout button. So we're going to start with an easy one and a really, really commonly uh, used one, and that is a bring all here button, right? So that's a button to gather all of the users throughout the workspace to one room. So let's go ahead and make our breakout button. Okay, so important thing to note here, right? If I just, if I made this button and I just left it on the room right here, right? Um, anybody would be able to click it, right? I'm leaving it in the space for anybody to be able to click. 
Like I mentioned earlier, this is where the notes and controls come into play, right? Because this button is actually gonna be, we actually kind of want it down here, right? We don't want it um, on the page for people to access. These navigational buttons, we really only want for admins and event controllers to be able to use. Okay, so we brought that into the notes and controls. So let's go ahead and name our button, right? So that's gonna be text under this first element category, right? We're gonna name this bring all here. Okay, note that you can change the background color stuff. I don't really care about doing that right now because this button is in my notes and controls, right? So nobody else is gonna see it. When we talk about putting buttons that are actually on our screen, then we can talk about you know, stylizing it. So um, in order to build the functionality for the button, right, we're gonna open up this thing that's called the config. So the config is this editor button right here. So this looks a lot scarier than it is, right? Why are there so many options? Well, we're really only gonna cover this one today, permanent, but I'm gonna explain why there are temporary rooms here. OEA has the ability to clone rooms and use them for breakout rooms, right? So what does that mean? Say, for example, you have an event where you want people to do speed dating, right? And you want to send people into groups of two. And maybe you're gonna have 50 people that show up and maybe you're gonna have 100, right? You don't wanna make you know, 25 or 50 clones of the exact same room. You just wanna take a room that you have and you want it to temporarily, you want OEA to temporarily create versions of this room in order to fill everyone in, right? So that's when you would use these and when you, you, know, you would select all your users or whoever you want it to go and you would put your target group size here, right? So in the speed dating case that I'm talking about, it's maybe a group of two, um, but you can put that target group size to whatever you'd like. There's a bunch more of uh, configurations here that we'll go over in a later training. But again, for today, we are just going to select permanent. Selecting permanent in the breakout config means that this button is going to send people or bring people to a room that is a permanent existing room within your workspace, right? And since I'm in the welcome page, right, and this is a breakout button, it's a bring all here button that's bringing everyone to the welcome page, this is a permanent room, right? This room is already in my workspace. So I'm gonna select permanent. Now I'm gonna to go to select users and rooms. There's a few different options that we're gonna configure here, right? But importantly, um, we are going to select all users, right? All users except pinned, right, for this button because it is a bring all here button. And now I'm gonna select the scene, right? In OEA, we use the term scene and room interchangeably. Okay, so select scene really just means select room. We're gonna click that and we're gonna click welcome page, right? And that's it. As I mentioned in the part one training, uh, many things that you do in OEA do not require saving, right? So you can actually just sort of close out of this window by clicking out of it. If that makes you a little nervous and you wanna double check what you just did, make sure that it's saved. You can just click on the button, open back up the config and see that it's all set, right? You're sending users to a permanent existing room. You're sending all users except pinned to the welcome page. Right? And now you have a bring all here button, okay? One thing that I do wanna note about breakout buttons is that we have the option to offer you a confirmation message, okay? So whenever you click the button for you to get a little pop-up window that says, are you sure you wanna run this breakout, right? Um, it's nice because uh, it's, just a, it's just double checking, right? If you, to make sure that you do in fact want to bring all the users into this space or shuffle them into random rooms, right? If you don't want that button, you don't want that double check, there's the option right here, confirm on run. You can just select no, okay? So just something to think about. And you can play with it in your space, right? And just see what you feel more comfortable with. But we just wanna let you know that that is an option. So now we've built a bring all here button. Let's talk about probably the second most common breakout button that gets used. And that is to shuffle users into rooms, right? So you can see that for this training, I went ahead and built three breakout rooms, right? We've got the lodge, the beach resort, and Greece. So now we're going to build a, a breakout button that sends users to those three breakout rooms, right? We're gonna randomly shuffle them into those three rooms. So let's make another breakout button. We'll again, bring it into the notes and controls, right? And we're gonna change the text on this one to send to breakout rooms, right? Feel free to name your buttons, whatever you want. The most important thing is that they make sense to you so that you know what you're clicking. And let's go ahead and open up the config. So again, we're gonna select permanent rooms, right? Because the lodge, the beach resort, and Greece are rooms that currently exist in this workspace. 
And for this button, we're shuffling all of the users in the space into these rooms, right? For, for the purposes of this button, we don't have specific ideas about where we want those people to go, okay? So we're just gonna select all users. Now, whenever I go to select my room, I'm gonna select all three of these, right? And if I have a target group size, I can put it in there. Um, for this training, I, you know, I don't, I'm just showing you how to make them. Um, but with this button, right, it's gonna send all of the users, it's gonna shuffle them into one of these three rooms. Okay, again, just close out to save. You can open it back up to double check. Okay, so now you have a button that's sending all of these users to these three rooms. And that is how to make a shuffle button to shuffle users randomly. But you don't always want to shuffle users randomly, right? Sometimes you want to um, you want to designate where people are going to go. Okay, so now I want to talk about user management, right? I mentioned briefly in the part one training um, tagging, right? The fact that you could tag people, and that is going to come particularly into play when you're building buttons to send people to certain places. So if we click up here at the menu button, we click users. We click manage users. This opens up our user list. Okay, so these are all the people who have been in my space. You'll notice that I put in some fake people in here, right? Fake person one, two, and three. I did that by just adding them like this, right? Okay, so super simple, just add and they appear here. Okay, you can very easily also delete them like this. Okay, now over here, right, these are our tags. Okay, so you'll notice, right, I have an admin tag and a current user tag. I also tagged these people accordingly, right? So fake person one, I added a team one tag. Fake person two, I added a team two tag. Fake person three, I added a team three tag. I did this because let's say, for example, I'm gonna have, for, the, for purposes of this training, I'm gonna have team one go to the lodge. I'm gonna have team two go to the beach resort and I'm gonna have team three go to Greece. Okay, so I've uploaded those. And to get those tags, right, all I did was click on this tagging icon and just add a tag, right? So that's exactly what I did. I clicked add and then done, okay? People can have more than one tag. Don't worry about, you know, like restricting people to one tag. They can easily have more than one tag. Um, and so this worked for me, right? Because I only put in three fake people with their tags, right? But what if I have a list of 100 people and I have all of their tags on a, on a spreadsheet, on a CSV, and I've got everybody's email addresses in one column and their tags on the other column? we have the ability for you to import that list. So you'll go back to users and you'll click import. And from there, any CSV file, um, you know, just, oh, oh yeah, we'll recognize uh, their, the email addresses and the tags and it will auto populate the user management uh, list accordingly. So keep that in mind for, for bigger events. You definitely don't wanna be manually entering hundreds of email addresses and, and, and tagging those people accordingly. So. Now that we've got some users in here with some tags, right? We've put in those team one, team two, and team three tags. OEA is going to recognize those tags when we're building our buttons. So let's go ahead and add yet another breakout button. Move it into the notes and controls, right? And for this one, let's say send to team rooms, right? Because we're gonna send people, we're gonna send team one, team two, and team three all to different places. Okay, and we'll go ahead and open up the config. Again, we're gonna select permanent. And under select users and rooms, we're now gonna go down to tags. Okay, so now here are these tags that we just populated. So like I said, we're gonna send team one to the lodge, right? And to add in a new, um, a new row, right? A new action that's in this same button. So to make sure that all happens at the same time, I'm gonna click new row. Now I'm gonna select team two. We're gonna send team two to the beach resort. And yet another row, team three is going to Greece. Okay, so close out to save. Let's open it up to check on it. All right. So here we have it. We're sending team one here, team two here, team three here. Our button is saved, okay? So that is how to make a breakout button that sends specific people to specific rooms, okay? So again, you've got your random one. In that case, you just select all users, right? And if you wanna use tags to send people to certain places, 
you're going to actually select them by their tag. Okay, so these are the most common buttons that you will typically have for your events and that you will um, put in the notes and controls, right? But what if you have a, um, what if you have a room or uh, sorry, a button that you wanna put on the screen, right? What about something like an enter here button, right? Well, the most common use of an enter here button is going to be um, on a landing page, right? And so that's gonna be an example of a button that you actually want users to click, right? So it wouldn't be in the notes and controls because if it's in the notes and controls, your users can't see it. You would actually wanna leave it on the screen. Okay, so let's see what that would look like. Let's go ahead and build another breakout button. All right, so we've got this one here. We're gonna leave this on the screen, get it nice and centered. And let's go ahead and put the text on this as enter here. All right, and we'll make the text a little bigger. Now, since this button is on the screen, right, we're gonna to wanna to make it look better. So we can click on it, we can change the background color, right? Okay, we can go to borders and corners, and we can adjust the corner radius. Right? You can edit the, uh, the border color, right? any of that stuff. Right? There's tons of different things. Um, if you, you, know, you wanna get really artsy about it, tons of stuff in here that you can play with. Okay? So we've got an enter here button. Um, we can change the color of the font. We can change the text. Let's give it a nice, nice text here since it's on our welcome page. Maybe make the text a little bigger. Maybe we can bold it, right? all of that stuff up here. All right, so let's open up the config and let's send everybody who clicks this button to the presentation room. So again, we've got permanent, and now we're gonna select users who clicked the button. And when we select our room, we're gonna select the presentation room. And that's it. So let's open up the config, let's look at that one more time. Permanent room, users who clicked the button, we're sending them to the presentation room. Right? All right, and so best way to test this button, remember, is not in editor mode. We're gonna to have to toggle director mode. And let's go ahead and click it. And here we are, right? We entered the presentation room. So let's go back. One more note about a landing page, right? Because they're used very frequently in OEA. Um, whenever you have you know, an enter here button on your landing page and you've got this beautiful you know, page that you want people to land on, um, it's important that your landing page actually functions as sort of a gate to your space, right? And so if you leave on the room list on the left-hand side, right, if you don't turn off your navigation, then your enter here button is kind of useless um, because people are just gonna be able to see the room list on the left-hand side, assuming that you have navigation turned on, and then they can sort of bypass your button altogether and just go into whatever room they want, right? So as a reminder, when you do have a landing page, you're gonna wanna go to that room settings I wanna scroll down to navigation and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that hide room navigator is checked. Okay, that's gonna collapse the room list on the left-hand side, which means that all people are gonna see when they come to this page, when they come to your landing page, is going to be um, exactly what you see here, right, on the screen, this nice, pretty full screen with an enter here button, okay? So we've got our page and we've got our enter here button, right? But what, about, what if there are times when you want to close your space, right? You don't want people navigating into the space or maybe the event hasn't started yet and you don't want people to be able to enter here before you're ready, right? But you wanna have this enter here button ready to go. Well, in OEA, we have the ability to make things visible or invisible, okay? So the way that you do that is by clicking on an element and it could be any element. It could be, you know, my face bubble here. Um, right now, we're gonna talk about it as it pertains to this, this uh, enter here button. And at the top of the settings, there's this little eyeball icon, right? It says toggle visible. If you click on it, right, you've now made this element invisible, okay? And you can see that there's that little eyeball with a, a crossed out, right, on that. You can tell, right, you can still see it, um, but you see that it's marked as invisible. If you wanted just to make sure, you can always go into director mode. You'll notice that button is no longer there, right? You can't click it, it's, it's, it's invisible. So, um, Easy enough, right? Make things invisible or visible just by toggling that button. 
Um, but what's more common to do and what's quite frankly easier is to make an action button that controls whether or not this button is visible, right? As I mentioned before, action buttons invoke actions, right? They do things. They, they look at all of the elements in the room and they say, okay, what do you want me to do, right? So now we are going to build our first action button and we're gonna build an action button that makes our enter here button visible. And we're gonna build another action button that makes our enter here button invisible, right? One important note about actions, um, about action buttons, and this is gonna become clearer whenever we open up the action builder, but I wanna draw your attention to it now. When you open up that action builder, when we create our action button with this little lightning bolt right here, right? Like I said, it's gonna say, okay, what am I doing, right? What element are you talking about? And what on the settings over here do you want me to do with it? It's gonna give you a list of all of the elements that are in this current room, right? So mine would pull up, right, this face bubble, right? Um, it would pull up this button, this button, this button, this button, right? Now, if you look, all elements in OEA have a name, right? In the same way that to change our workspace name, we click on it and we updated this text box here. And to edit a room name, you click on the room and you edit the room name here, right? You can do the same with elements. So if you look at our buttons, right? Breakout buttons are by default titled shuffle users but they're all gonna be named that, right? So we have four breakout buttons in this space right now. So watch how as I click between these buttons, their names don't change, right? They are all named shuffle users. So when we open up that action builder and it's asking you what button you're talking about, what button are you trying to show and hide, you're not gonna know which one you're talking about because they're all named the same. So in order to mitigate that confusion, best practice always in OEA when talking about action buttons is to make sure that you've named your elements. Right? So we're gonna click on this enter here button and we are going to name it, literally, enter here button. Now this is different from the text, right? Text is what shows up on the actual button. Whereas the name of the element up here is just the element name. It has nothing to do with what's actually on this button. Okay, so now we've named this enter here button, enter here button, and we're gonna be able to find it easier whenever we open up the action builder. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna click this lightning bolt to add an action button. Okay, let's go ahead and move it down here. And this button is going to be to show the enter here button. Okay, so let's give this quotes, make it a little bit clearer. All right, so this is to show our enter here button. Let's open up the action builder. That's gonna be this little editor icon right here. Okay, so we got a bunch of different drop-down menus here, right? The first one is going to ask, to what does this pertain, right? Is it an element in your, in your space? Is it something for the room overall? Is it something for a specific user? Is it something for um, a group of elements that may be tagged in a certain way? Because yes, in the same way that you can tag users based on their email addresses, you can also tag certain elements with a tag. Um, but for this button, right? Um, and then, you know, the easiest thing and that's the easiest place to start is gonna be an element, right? The action, or sorry, the enter here button is an element in our space. So for this action button, we're talking about an element. Next, it's going to ask you, what room is this in, right? What room? Because you can make action buttons that control elements in other rooms that you're not currently in, right? But our enter here button is in the welcome page. So instead of selecting any other room or all rooms, right, we're gonna select welcome page. Now, this is what I was talking about, right? So here are all of the elements that are in my space, right? So we've got Lauren, right? That was what I named my own little face bubble here. We've got three shuffle users buttons, right? Those are these down here. We don't know which one is which because we didn't name those elements, but that's okay, right? Because what we're talking about is our enter here button, right? That's what we named that, right? This button right here, that's what we named it. This next one, um, we're gonna go over these more in detail in the future trainings. Um, basically what you select here changes what populates in this next drop-down menu, this final drop-down menu here but we're gonna leave it to set for right now, okay? Set just means like, are we clicking something over here on the settings grid, right? Which we are because we're toggling this visible icon either on or off. So the next thing to do is, right, what are you looking for? So this is an alphabetical order. Um, we also have a, you know, a, an autofill, 
right here. And the reason why these are up top are because these are things that I've used recently. So any things that you have used recently will appear at the top, right? That's why these are not in alphabetical order. Visible for me is one that I've used pretty frequently, right? But just to show you how we would get there, right? We could easily just type it in there and click visible, okay? Now you'll notice that this little checkbox has appeared, okay? And uh, the checkbox is going to be checked because this button is going to make this button, right, the enter here button, visible, right? So if you unchecked it, it would make it invisible, but we wanna check it because this button is to make our enter here button visible. And we're gonna click done. Now a show enter here button is great, but it doesn't really do anything without a hide enter here button, right? Because if we tested it, it would just constantly be showing, okay? So we're gonna make a reverse of this button and this is gonna be the easiest part, right? All we're gonna do is copy and paste this button. Right, so I'm going to use Command C, Command V, and I'm going to rename this one Hide, Enter Here button, okay? And I'm going to open up the Action Builder. Now, this Action Builder is set, right? It's a, it's a pasted version of my first one. So we're targeting an element in the Welcome Page room. We're tar that element is the Enter Here button, and we're setting it to Visible, right? All I'm going to do in this Reverse button is uncheck that box so that now this button is telling me to make that enter here button invisible. And then I'm gonna click done. Okay, so let's go ahead and test out our buttons, right? So in order to do that, we'll go into director mode. And since our button is already showing, right, we'll go ahead and test out our hide enter here button. Now it's hidden and now we'll click to show. Okay, so now you have buttons that can show and hide your other button, right? You can do this with anything in OEA. I could have built the exact same setup and targeted my face bubble, right? And use this button to show and hide myself as a presenter. Um, you can do it with any element in, this, in the room. Um, and that's not all that action buttons can be used for, right? Like I said earlier, um, they can be used to essentially control anything on this settings, right? Anything on the settings can all be found in the action builder. So feel free to play around with that now that you know the basics of how to use an action button. Um, that will be super helpful when it comes to just moving things around your space. In the part three training, we're also going to get really into action buttons and learn how to automate um, you know, people on screen, how to use the action buttons to mute people and unmute people and that sort of thing. Um, so definitely stay tuned for the part three training on that. The final thing that we are going to cover in today's training is how to share your screen. So in order to do that, we are gonna to go to our presentation room. So as you can see, this room was specifically designed to have a presentation element, right? So a couple of things about screen sharing. Um, by default, the, you know, the default screen sharing option in OEA is a full size screen, right? You don't have to be in a room that looks like this to share your screen. We could very easily go into the lodge and we could share our screens here, right? There's no big screen in here. There's nothing special about this room. It's just a casual seating room, right? But if I did want to share my screen in here, I would click this monitor icon up here. So let's go ahead and try that. So because I'm in Chrome, this is what my configuration looks like, right? If you're in um, another browser, you're just gonna see your entire screen and application window. Um, please note that OEA currently only right now supports native sound sharing. So you can only really share your audio through a Chrome tab, okay? If you wanna share through an application window or your entire screen, um, you would need to not be wearing headphones so that the audio could then pipe through your computer speakers. This is a little bit choppy and it's definitely not the best option, um, but there are also softwares that you can download um, that would make that sound quality Im be improved quite a bit. But for today, I'm just gonna show you how to share in a Chrome tab and how to share that audio, right? You'd wanna make sure that this box is checked right here. So if you're ever sharing in a Chrome tab, you're realizing, oh, my audio is not coming through, go back and make sure that you checked this box here, okay? So let me share my screen here. We've got our nice OEA oh, yeah, explained deck. And this is the default, right? So you see the screen is sort of faded to black behind us. The, the deck is really big on the screen and all of the other attendees in the room would be down here with me, okay? So this is fine. Um, it's a big, nice screen, right? Everything else is faded to black, so it's very focused. A lot of people prefer that for that reason. 
right? But you'll notice also um, OEA has sort of faded away, right? You can't really tell if you had a designated presenter spot, that presenter is now down here with everybody else, right? And so um, you're not really like in OEA anymore for lack of a better phrase. You're sort of just like in a screen share setting, okay? So what we do is we have the ability to actually build a custom screen sharing element so that the screen share can just appear in a portion of your screen. So in order to show you how to do that, we're gonna go back to the presentation room. And I'm gonna delete this here so I can show you how to build it from scratch. So in order to add a custom screen share element, you're gonna add in another participant video element, right? So if you remember from the part one training, it's just like you're adding another person, okay? What I'm gonna do is under user assignment, if I hover over this icon right here, right? Right now it's a video camera because it's set to receive somebody's video, right? It's a video window. But if I hover over it, you'll see that it says toggle stream type. And if I click that, now it's the screen sharing icon, the same thing as this one up here, right? There's only two um, types to toggle between, so you won't get confused trying to find the one that you came back from. Now that this, that this uh, face window is set to be a screen sharing element, this is now set to receive a screen share, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and size it to be about what I want it to be, right? About to cover this screen. And now whenever I go to share my screen, it only shares within this window, okay? And I can actually play around with this in real time as I'm sharing my screen, right? So if I wanted it to be bigger, smaller, right? I can actually move it around accordingly and once I get it to a size that I feel, you know, that I'm comfortable with, right, we have the ability in OEA to actually lock elements, right? So this is a pretty big element. You don't want to accidentally click on it and be like moving it around once you got it to a size and a, and a place that you really like. So in order to do that, and you can do this with any element, not just with screen sharing elements, you would click on it and you would click to lock it, right? So now you'll notice that I can't actually click on it to edit it, right? I have to click on this lock icon up here, right? I double click there. Now I can unlock it and do some editing, right? But it is helpful to be able to lock things, especially um, screen sharing elements, so that just because they are so large, they tend to take up a, a big part of your room um, so that you're not accidentally messing with it as you are dragging other things around and editing things in the space. And that is sharing your screen on Oye. We'll go ahead and go back to the welcome page to wrap things up. Thank you so much for tuning in to the part two of the basics training. Um, please keep in mind that um, we are super excited to help you always uh, execute any of your events, right? This training is meant to, to sort of empower you to be able to do it on your own, but please still know that we are always here to help. Reach out to team at oea.co with any questions at any time about your event. We're happy to help uh, with whatever level of tech support you need. Um, stay tuned for the part three training where we will get into even more detail on how to make your events super awesome and use some of our more advanced elements and features to do so. Um, and that's it. Thanks so much for joining. See you soon.